right, welcome to Morris Federation uh, event. Then today we've got uh, Andrew Knightlin Steele and Tony Warren, musician um, from the Knights of King Iron Jig team, who are going to teach you uh, the Nutting Girl in the style of Ducklington. So handing straight over to Andrew Knight. Morning, everybody. Um, nice that you could come along on Sunday morning. This Sunday morning, isn't it? Um, and uh, we've moved this to 12 o'clock to um, allow everybody to do two minutes at 11 o'clock for the Remembrance Day. The um, Ducklington, uh, which we're going to cover today, is the Nutting Girl. And um, to begin with, let's just get ourselves a little bit warmed up and then we'll cover the basic elements. Um, we are not going to be stressed for time at all, so do please ask as many questions as you wish. Um, we've got a couple of hours set aside for this. It might end a little bit sooner if we all get together and, uh, and get it done. Um, but if you want to just keep dancing it until one uh, till two o'clock, that's absolutely fine with me. Um, so warming up, please. The warming up is just to get your muscles sorted. Um, <clears throat> and we just end up moving each of the muscle groups that you're going to be using um, so that you use them to the ends of the ranges and you end up being able to get the blood flow going to the muscle tissues to prevent injuries and hopefully it will improve your performance. Um, while I'm talking, I'm not just warming up jaw muscles, I'm doing feet and knees at the same time. And you just start slowly and gradually move up um, through the whole thing so you get a bit faster. And then loosen your shoulders. And then move your move yourself and this is a good time to just to practice some stepping and you should take plenty of time on this and in fact in a set team situation you can use the uh, warming up um, as a first dance one that uh, is a typically um, not overly technical one that you agree that you're going to take a bit easy. Remember to go sideways, forwards and backwards, and in rotation. I will put in a few things um, in terms of health and safety through the dances, just to make sure that the dancing is good. Um, but generally speaking, keep moving. A warm up should be continuous until you are breathing heavily, but able to speak, which is around about where I currently am. <clears throat> um, and then you're ready to start some dancing. Okay, dance, uh, Ducklington steps. The first step that we're gonna cover, which is probably uh, literally teaching granny to suck eggs on this one is double step. It's a left foot start. Um, and we tend to look for good stepping practice, which is from a point with your foot raised, ready to make the first step. So this is the and preparation point. You're going to switch feet, bringing one down and putting the other one into the same aspect as the one that's in the air. If I turn sideways, the foot camera will show you um, roughly where I am with that. The bottom of your leg is loose and you're basically literally just going to go switch and that three times through and then a hop is a double step so it's literally going to be <clears throat> and that's what we're looking for if you look at videos of people doing a lot of stepping particularly those relatively new to the morris who haven't really learned that that is how the stepping is done, you'll find them doing this on the spot or backwards here. And this is really bad practice. This is not Morris stepping at all. This is just running on the spot, it's knees up Mother Brown, which is not what we're trying to do here. So we're looking for this as a step. This is, this is the way to to look at it. <clears throat> so 
we just run through that stepping practice, that stepping style, just literally get it patterned into the head. And this is around about the speed as well. And a note on speed, if you dance too fast, you can't complete the step. So your step looks rushed, you don't do the full hand movements, and you will end up not showing the form as well as you could possibly do. Most people dance fast because they want to get to the next bit and they want to put in too much effort. So with this, you're actually going to have to get a lot more bounce in your system that you're going to use um, in order to get it. So you're literally pushing off the toes. <clears throat> and please, please make sure you never land on your heels. The shock of landing on your heels is why so many Morris dancers end up with knee problems. Because they're banging force through into their knees. So it's all done as a bounce on the toe. <clears throat> and you can see on my feet, even though I'm very flat footed, heels don't touch the ground. If you'd lean a mantra in your head to do this, it's change, 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 hop, change, 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 hop. Okay, we're all good, excellent. <clears throat> the arm movements to go with the double steps. On the hop, they're out here, which is what Cecil Sharp describes as up. This is high up, this is up. So you're gonna go smooth downward movement on one, two, three, and back up on the hop. This becomes important a little later because that step and that arm movement, you need to complete that. And make sure that on each step, you actually complete the whole movement. So you're gonna be the one, two, three, pop. <clears throat> In terms of Ducklington, because it's a reconstructed tradition, you find people tend to dance it either as a field town style or as a Bampton style, and they tend to drift towards one or the other. We drift towards the field town style. So we've got the flick and float type of styling. So we're gonna literally go and one, two, three, up. And that's the basic step form that we're gonna be using. Okay, the next step, if I can move on, if everybody's happy with that. The next step is a Bampton caper, a half, ca a half caper, if you prefer. Some people call it a Bampton caper, some people call it a half caper, um, which is basically up and bounce. And the hands are beginning, are bringing you up so that you're using your chest musculature to pull you into the air as you swing the arms up, keep your core locked in. And as you keep your core locked in, the muscles here will pull you into the air. So you're going from here, straight up in front. There's no big scoop for this one in Darkington, it's just up. Okay, so it's big leap, change your feet, land on it, bounce on it. Now I'm quite well aware, I think, that I'm just teaching you stuff you already know in this, this instance. But the next bit is, and this is one of the bits that really catches people out with Ducklington, is the flick. And I think people overfocus on the fact of having to flick it, when really all you really need to be doing is doing the steps properly and the flick will come naturally. It will simply just come as it does. So the whole sequence would be. <coughs> A 
And what I hope to have shown you there is that if you get the hop double step arms correct, you will naturally be in the wrong place to begin the half caper. So you have to move your arms really quickly as you gather yourself to get to, to go up. And that will introduce the flick into the movement without you even having to think about it. Hopefully that makes it easier. I have my fingers crossed. Okay. In this thing, in the uh, presentations we did on Ilmington, the same thing applies um, as it does to Ducklington. Okay, so we come in as a once to yourself with a half caper. <clears throat> and the bounce of the half caper brings the hands up, ready for the double stepping. And the whole of the foot up is two double steps, two half capers, two double steps two half capers. Okay, we're gonna do that with some music and the tune is the nutting girl for this jig. This time. happy with that. Nobody's saying no. We're going to get through this really fast. <laughs> so everybody got the stepping okay? They've got the arm flick okay? This is all uh, brilliant. I haven't got the half whatever it is totally. The half caper cake. Um, do you need me to run through that right from the beginning as a complete thing? I'm, I'm just getting on the wrong leg. I, I can see what you want, but my me, me body's not doing it. <laughs> so it should be left, big leap, land right, hop right. So the head's got it, but the... Uh, but the body's not complying. I just think I need more practice to get it in there. Okay. Um, let's do that again, um, perhaps twice through. <coughs> How are we doing on that one? We all good, Kate? Thank you. Excellent. Got the thumbs up. That's lovely. Everybody question. else is happy. Mike's happy. Yeah, we're all good. Pauline? Can I ask a question? Of course. When I've seen Ducklington done by some teams, they go out on the... and you're going up and down. Is that just a different interpretation? I think it is. Um, when we looked at well, the, the notation, um, we have literally interpreted what's written. And yeah. what we tended to do when we've seen that interpretation is we go back to what Sharp said the movement was. And then we've done that. Because those are well, 1910, 1912, 19, up to about 1920. Um, when he wrote those, this is how you do the step. 
Now, what I haven't seen is anything handwritten about how you do the steps that he's got in the Morris books. So the Morris books is the earliest written record mm. of how to do the steps. So if somebody has written it up and actually recorded the dance and they've said, hands go up, this is Sharp's definition of up. If they go high up, this is Sharp's definition of high up. If they go gathered, then they do this. Mm -hmm. So if gather doesn't exist, Sharp did not see gather. Okay. Okay. Thank um, you. And or, or the recorder, if they're using Sharp's notation, didn't see gather. So they, they're not going to do this. But if that's how you do your half capers, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it because it's, it's a styling issue. It's, it's, it's not a right wrong thing. It's, it's simply that's how you're, you're styling. Which brings us to another point, actually. The point is, I'll teach you the jig, but if your team does Ducklington, your foreman has the last word as to how the styling goes. I don't. They do. Um, because it's, it's the foreman of your team is the person you should be listening to about the styling issues as to how that team needs to be presented or wants to be presented. They've been voted in for that reason to do that job. And that, you know, Andrew said is not a good argument. <laughs> because Andrew doesn't know any better than anybody else, frankly. <laughs> we just make it up as you go along. So your foreman is the person that you should be listening to in terms of styling. But I will tell you exactly what I, what I interpret as written down. Right, so that's worth worth doing that okay let's do that one again and we'll move on to the next bit <clears throat> happy nice of you to join us sue glad to see you or at least where is the plant <laughs> lovely got a wave that's brilliant um sue bass you're muted can't hear you I'm a retired dancer. I'm interested in the workshop, okay? I'm practicing in my kitchen, okay? Oh, yeah, well, yeah you're good. So I will get off there for the moment. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the next bit we'll run through then is the, the chorus. Um, and the chorus is a set of side steps and a set of half capers. And then... Um, a set of double steps and a set of half capers. So basically the only new thing here is a long side step. And the long side step is literally side behind, side behind, side behind, side, hop. And I hope that was seven and a hop. Looks about right, doesn't it? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, hop. <coughs> And for each, the, the hands for this, for each of the four steps, you're making one sweep of your hand. And you're literally doing from belt line, up over, and then round in one sweep on four steps. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pop. And then coming back the other way, um, and these are very much a, a sweep over like this, but please don't bend the body forwards. Body should be straight, core locked in. And I have a lot of core to lock in. <laughs> um, can we have music for the chorus, please? Tell me. So here it is with the music. We're losing sound, Drew. Sorry, Clive. 
I don't know about everybody else, but I lost Tony's sound then. Same here. And here. We start again, I won't speak. Is somebody not on mute? No, everyone's muted. I Everybody's don't know why muted. I did that. No, yeah, let's try it again. Shorter. Okay, everybody happy with that? Two long sides, two double steps, two half capers, whole thing repeated. Yes, it was quite intermittent. We're still not musicking correctly. Can you change it to the other, whatever it's on now, original sound off or on, just switch it to the other one. Try that. Can you please show the side step again? Because your feet are actually in the frame of your picture. So right, I can okay. see your body travelling yeah. sideways, but I couldn't see what your feet were actually doing. So is right, try you, the, can there's you a see the third spotlight? No. Drew's, Drew's feet are on a different uh, screen. Okay, so let me try. Do you just get two on your screen? My you get Drew and Lynn. Andrew and Lynn. That okay, I'll watch somebody else's feet. So I was watching no, Andrew no. he was talking. <laughs> no, hold on, I'll I'll um I'll just remove one of the spotlights and add them again. Can, uh, can you get two on your on your spotlight or not, Susan? If you can get three spotlights, then you'll get a feet shot. S Susan, can you see two? If you go to speak of you, I've can you three, see I've Andrew three, and Andrew's feet? I've got three now. Okay, Great. good. Let, let us know if that's any better. Try again, please. Same again. <laughs> Susan, was that okay? We're good. We got it. Lovely. And the music, everybody? That seems We're better that time, the music. <clears throat> yeah, I think we I think we'd lost one or two settings somewhere. Never mind. We've got it. Um so that sidestep, I tend to prefer a sidestep that means that you're actually crossing your foot, so you, one foot lands literally behind the other rather than a side and together um, it simply marks the difference between the two steps otherwise you can do sort of a just a turn of the body to to move the same step in a different direction which is not really a side step a side step should go sideways kind of a bit of a clue in the name <laughs> so you're going to go side behind side behind side behind side hop all the same things apply. You're switching feet in the air. Your upright stance, your body posture, your head is up. Oh, I sound like a strictly judge now. <laughs> so up core. Okay, let's give that a go.
Is everybody happy with that? Happy that they're doing what they think they want to be doing? Happy that their movements are doing uh, everything that they need to? I'm seeing no dissenting hand movements, which is all good. <clears throat> I've got I've got the light feet. <laughs> but coming from a clog dancing background, I've got the feet. But trying to get the arms to do the right thing at the same time, I don't know if you've got any hot tips at all, or whether it's just a case of trial, try, practice, practice, practice. There is no substitute for practice, practice, practice. There's no great secret to any of this. Um, the only hot tip is um, I'm, I'm happy that you're focused on the um, on the fact of getting the arms and the, the, the things together. If you've got um, any musical timing, I have very little musical timing. I've had to learn this rote. But if your if your musical timing is good, you're coming up on the and, and you're preparing for the next thing on the and every single time. I just had a message from Andrew. He's supposed to be with us. Big pardon a moment. Plumbing emergency. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you're you're literally you're doing and one two three. So you're going one two three and one two three. So you're doing things on one two three and then waiting to go on the and or preparing on the and. So does that hot tip kind of work for you? I'll try it out. I think, yeah, clock dancing is a little more disconnected, isn't it, from hands and feet you have to learn separately. I don't really have any hands. <laughs> um, Righty ho, um, can we do that from the top, please? An intro, an A and B. Now for the eagle-eyed among you, you'll have noticed I've got myself wrong-footed somewhere in the middle of that little lot. Quite understand where. Shit happens. <laughs> um, the, the point I was just making about the and to, um, to Kate is, is actually works really well. If you use the and to prepare yourself for the main movement of the bar, the and being the last part of that bar, it actually works really well to get yourself into the preparatory point on the and. And remember that the, the step has its and hand place so that you can have, you have to place and for the stepping because that actually finishes that. The, the, the tradition may be, I suppose, described as an and one, two, three tradition rather than a one, two, three and tradition. If anybody understands what the hell that means, good on you. <laughs> okay the um the first uh it isn't a slow but it's the first other element uh, this, the 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 first verse if you like um after the the chorus um is a sidestep sequence again uh and the sidestep sequence is to the left done in a triangle and you have two two sidesteps one each way to do that triangle so from your position, you're going to take a 45 degree diagonal angle, one, two, three, hop, and then you're going to do a sideways 
and backwards to your starting place on the next double step. So you're doing one, two, three, hop, round and back. All right, so the whole track, this is, this is the same movement, <clears throat> except you're doing one, two, three, hop, rather than seven and a hop. So you're doing the same arms, one, two, three, hop, and then coming back on the other arm. It's just the form and the move that you're, the positioning that you're changing, which is one, two, three, and cross and back and a hop. And then there's two half capers, and then you do exactly the same thing again. Okay, with, with a tune in a moment, it will look much like this. Which? Uh, it'll be an A again, won't it? good super that's excellent okay um which followed by another chorus exactly the same so we ought now to be able to dance the whole lot through to the end of the second chorus thank you Again, please, my error. Is everybody happy up to that point? Lou, can I ask something, please? Yep. When you're doing the triangle, yep. so the first side is the slightly longer bit. Yes. The other two sides of the triangle you've got to do pretty quickly, haven't you? Uh, yes, because you've only got four steps to do two other sides of the triangle, which yeah. is actually half the time for each of those sides. Yes, because it. You got four steps going in one direction. Yeah. Two going across and two coming yeah. back. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. So it's naturally going to be quite quick. Everybody else happy with that? Do you still caper off off the left in the 
in that back of the triangle. Yes. So one, two, three, hop. One, two, three, four. So the weight's on your left foot already. So do you have to kind of switch? No, you right? don't do a four. You do another hop. Okay, right. Which is where the, the foot will be on the other side. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to look at the foot cam? Um, so it's going to be one, two, three, hop. One, two, three, pop. Yeah? Lovely. Perfect. Would you like to do that again? Just as a dance to cement that in? Uh, Drew? Mike? Can I just uh, suggest uh, the way I think of that, uh, of that movement? Yeah. Uh, which helped me. I imagine that I'm dancing... Uh, the track of a, a letter, capital D, uh, except that the capital D is slanted over to one side. And, uh, and I, I find that uh, that way it helps me to get the track right. Yeah, I, italic capital D would certainly work. Yes. So you've got the straight out and the curve to come back. That's right. Does that help? That probably does help, actually. That's quite a, that's a good description, Mike. OK, all of that through once more. I mean, you know, here for a couple of hours exercise class. That sounds like a plan, doesn't it? Everybody happy? Even those people dancing on the stairs? <laughs> Excellent. Okay, the next part is the slows. There's only one slow for Ducklington. Um, this is a Beetle Crusher, Alla Field Town, done back to front. So what you're going to do is a step, a tap, a down, big leap, land. So the big movement is between three and four, unlike Field Town, where it's between two and three. It's a subtle difference in the timing. So your step, tap, foot down, big caper. Step, tap, down. Okay, give that a go, see if you can do that. Okay, ready and step, tap, down, paper, step, tap, 
down caper. And the arm movement is step, tap, down, caper. So everything is done in a in a line, but you're just going to end up with slightly presented low present arms, which is not a gather and it's not out and it's not balanced. It's kind of down low, step, tap, gather up. And the gather movement is not out to the side to bring in. It's here to go up. Um, the trick I use for this is I keep my palms to the ground which stops you doing this. Okay, if I'm doing field town, palms are usually up. When I'm doing Ducklington, the palms are usually down. Um, and that's just my reminder of up, because I'm going to flick out that way. Whereas if I'm doing Bampton, I'll scoop up and then flick with a, with a turn. All right, so if you try and keep the palms down. In Ilmington, when we did Ilmington, we had palms literally flat facing forwards so that you ended up with this bit going. Um, those who were here and remember the, the Ilmington sessions that we did last year. Um, but with Ducklington, if you keep your, if you keep the backs of your hands facing forwards, you've got this, it's not naturally turned away. Um, even though that's only a forearm movement, it kind of goes out to the shoulders as well. Uh, so that will help you keep them keep them straight down so you're going to go there here palms back straight up okay now that all sounds really easy um it's just that the music has got a slight catch in it and it's designed to trip you up and it trips everybody up and it's a lovely one so I'm going to get Tony to do it with the music and I'll demonstrate it. And the catches are before the half capers and you've got a little bit of a pause and it's a different length on each half. Confuse the musician, that's not <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, there are several solutions to this. Um, and it's a policy decision on the side that you're in, effectively. Um, the policy decision that we made is the tune, as recorded and written down, is always correct. No matter what. If you can't dance it, it's because you can't dance it. But that doesn't mean that tune isn't what the collectors heard and what they wrote down. So this is Joseph Druce. Is it written on the new, new music? Um, a lot of Ducklington tunes were collected, I think, from Druce. And if that's what they collected and that's what they wrote down, that's what the people did. Um, consequently, if the dance doesn't quite work, that's the dancer's fault. That's not the music's fault. Um, and so you need to give that extra time. Uh, what a lot of teams will do is simply just chop a bit out of the music. And um, that's not our policy. So our solution is slightly different. Um, and we just give a pause movement each time for the length of time required, which is how you, when you saw my foot make a kind of push into the air, um, because that's how I mark the timing that I need. I'll show you again now that I've explained it and you can see where we are.
And I can assure you that it's not the musician following the dancer. It just looks like it. Because what we start with when we learn these things is the musician just plays the tune straight. Doesn't follow the dancers, just straight. And that's the length of tune that we had to work with. So we needed to make sure we could fill the tune because as sure as eggs is eggs, they did something there, even if it's not recorded as what they did. So that's the solution that we've come to and therefore is the one that we teach. If you want to change the music, that's totally up to you. But yeah, I won't be getting that today. <laughs> Took me long enough to learn it this way. <laughs> um, let's try it out, see how you get on. Problems, issues, comments, complaints, moans, head in hands moments, Pauline wants it done again, I guess everybody else does. Drew, can I ask, are they, is it, it's obvious, is it two half capers that we're talking about at the very end? No, only one, only, uh, yeah, there'll be two half capers after the whole thing. That ends, make... ends the section. Sorry, go ahead. Can I just make a quick comment about the hands? It's interesting because I had always done Ducklington with my palms facing backwards and just what a really interesting difference it makes to being able to do the flicks, that's all. Yeah, it does. I just it makes it much easier, that, that, I think. Sorry, if I said that simple, I don't mean easy, but that simple instruction made all the difference. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think it, it, it seems to work, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, it's only taken me 25 years to find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, again, again. So is that any better or more confused? I think that's better, but I wouldn't mind doing it again. Absolutely, we can do it a number of times more. You've got about another three quarters of an hour to, to do this. Uh... <laughs> okay, same again, please. So does everybody want it on a continuous loop for about another four or five goes? Yes, they would, please. Same section, three or five times. <clears throat> straight in or the intro each time? Intro each time. No, intro and then straight through. Just keep going straight through.
you. <clears throat> okay, comments, questions, too much puffing. <laughs> The slows require more energy. They do. Five in a row. <laughs> Definitely. Yes. <clears throat> and the dance after that is um, finished off with another chorus. And that chorus ends with four plain capers. Um, and your presentation at the end of the dance. Okay, the chorus is exactly the same. Can I ask a question, Drew, or offer yes. a comment yes, about, the, about the pause? Yes. Um, I find I, I tend to put my, uh, tap my left foot on the floor in the pause, um, which helps me with my balance because I'm, I'm old and uh, it helps me keep the time. I don't seem to be able to stop myself from doing that. If I try to stop myself from doing it, I'm likely to fall over. <laughs> An observation from here, Drew taps the air rather than the floor. Yeah. Yes, I, uh, the, the, yes, the, I, re I realise that, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think on one occasion I did tap the floor, Mike. Um, yeah. I, 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 it, it is just, it's a movement that I have to make in order to keep, keep the count. Now that's because I'm not particularly musically adept. Or actually, I think the word particularly there was probably an error. Um, I am not at all <laughs> musically adept. Um, and and as a consequence, I need something to uh, to do in that time in order to keep it. Yeah, I'm knowing that you're getting old then. I'm, the, uh, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, the, same, <laughs> I'm the same in that respect, uh, Andrew. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it, and it is the, the non-musicians and the non-musically inclined solution to that. Um, I mean, I, I I think I've danced inflection for both 6A and 4-4 four, four in the dance so far. And for those people who are musically inclined, you'll be looking at it and you'll be going, how on earth did you do that? <laughs> because it's so obvious that you should do it in one or the other. Um, and I couldn't tell you which time signature it is. Can I ask something, Drew? Yeah. Um, it is back to basics again, you know, with the beetle crushers, because I think I'm doing them okay now, because I know it's different than the uh, other beetle crusher versions. Could you just do it really just slow-mo, just tap? Because it's just, I've got to remember, if I take weight on that, after the tap, if I take weight on that leg and leap to the oh. other leg or not, I sort of, do, I think I'm doing it right now, but I just could do with going over it. Cool, um, uh, the Drew cam for Drew's feet, all right it's a step weight on left a tap of the right a step weight on right a caper weight on left so yeah you're just changing legs at each time apart from when you do the tap because the tap is just like a little precursor to yes the swap. Yeah. okay so you're swapping yeah. each time it, it does help if there's an ant's nest close. And the very first time you do it, you're actually, you're not tapping as the first thing, you're leaping onto. Your, you're, you have a step on you. as your you first move. Yeah. yeah, that's the thing where yeah. I'm going. In, in Field Town, it would be the tap first, but in Ducklington, it's the step first. Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, we're all happy? Whole dance. Yeah, all good from the top. Lovely.
go. Uh, questions, comments, observations? <coughs> Nothing, they're all dead. <laughs> I got a question, Drew. Go for it, Eddie. It's I've never thought about core muscles in doing Morris dancing. Now, I do them in Pilates, I'm kind of used to them, but I've never used them. Nobody's ever mentioned it. That I can see that it's there in good dancers now. My question is: Do you hold it, hold those, have the tension in those core muscles in the front here? Do you have it throughout the dance? That's question one. And question two is: Though the hankies are very light, is there a similar kind of use of the muscles actually here at the uh, lower shoulders, at the back? Yes. Yeah, I thought there might be. <laughs> I've only discovered these recently. <laughs> Sorry to say. <laughs> uh, Lynn, do you have anything to add? Um, because you're the dance teacher, so uh, you might be better off answering this question. Um, yeah, as far as using your, your core muscles, yes, of course you should, if you can um, think about it, use those core muscles all the way through. Um, that's what's helping you with your balance and keeping you in the right place at the right time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, for example, that slight pause in the middle of the slows. If you're not using your core muscles, you might have that a bit of a problem with balancing. So, yeah, I think you should be thinking about it all the time, really. And I suppose um, because I've always danced, that I don't have to think about it too much. Yeah, but it is important. And what about the back muscles and the use of the hands and the expression with the hands? Yeah, same really. Um, yeah, you, you are using those muscles, obviously, your back muscles and your shoulders. So, yes. But I haven't been. I've been using the ones in the front here. Okay. The ones near, yeah, it's, it's the scapula, isn't it? Coming, the, bringing the scapulas together at the back? Yes. Okay. I'm getting it right, slowly. <laughs> yes, yes, you are, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in to, to be doing everything. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just not not something I'd applied to. I've applied it to other things, but never never to Morris. But I guess it's all one and the same thing, really. Yeah, and it's really yeah. good that you're thinking about it now, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's just just a penny drop today. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> one thing that I've heard said about uh, thanks, Morris please. is the Morris isn't all about. It isn't just about hand movements and foot movements, because all dancing comes from there. Right? Yes, so you, you're involving your whole body, your whole dance, all the dance comes from there. The, um... Where's there? Sorry, we can't see you. Um, the heart. On the chest, on, chest. The, on, the, on, the, uh, on your sternum. 
Yeah. All um, dancing, all dancing comes from there. Yeah. Um, it's it's um, about centering um, and being, you know, your core centering point uh, is where you come from. And in terms of the use of the muscles, going back to that, Eddie, um, yeah. if you keep your head over your heart and your heart over your pelvis and then down straight into the ground, what your limbs do both out from that and underneath that is is just those movements that your body needs to make. But the way that you keep that line, that upright line, is by using your core muscles to hold it. Um, what I think Lynn will probably come, I would like her to jump in for this comment if she's um, if she's able. I don't think you just contract your core muscles and leave them there. I think that they vary depending upon the movements that you're doing, but your 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 drive should be to keep them engaged as a counterbalance to what your back muscles and your your limbs are trying to do. They're the ones that give you the stability in order to, to let the other the limbs move off of your core, your center. Is that, does yeah. that make sense, Lynn? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. And what you were saying about the line as well, like you say, head over heart, but also shoulders over hips. Yes. Over feet, you know, um, that's quite important. Can I just make a comment as a physiotherapist? I've right. Yeah. Just retired, but um, your core muscles should be hopefully working in the background without you realising it all the time. That's the whole point of them. I know we fo people focus on them when you do things like Pilates, but the whole point is they're there doing it with you unconsciously. It's just some of our some of our core muscles don't work as well as others and that's why approaches like Pilates are trying to actually activate them a bit more but to do with your shoulders as as Andrew just said or Drew sorry um you've got to have some muscles holding an area of your body lost you you've muted Unmute, Kate. Oh, yeah. So when you're moving your arms, you're right. You've got to have muscles that just automatically, without you knowing it, hold your muscle, hold yourself there, so that you can move your arms. So everything people are saying as observations are correct. Yeah. Um, just just so we all know where we are. I'm an osteopath by trade. Lynn's a dance teacher. Jules is a physio as well. Kate, physio as well. <laughs> you got the best information in this workshop. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, guys. Don't be, don't be, be careful. Oh, Clive, oh. Clive was in nursing, I think. And oh. Clive? <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't going to say anything about that. But um, given my age, although I don't remember it, I do know that in Victorian times, posture was encouraged through the balancing of books on ladies' heads. And the, 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 the effect of that was the notorious straight back syndrome with the high chin. And I just wonder whether an image of that in your mind when you're dancing might also help to tone your core and, and keep your posture uh, around the area that, that you want it to be rather than flopping around. Oh, can, I, can I add something there because it might be worth saying is, you know, we were talking about the, the breast muscles. If you think, if you just slightly stick, think really tall and just stick your chest forward. You know how girls are, can be a little bit into a bit embarrassed just stick your chest forward a bit and think as if you had a string from your breastbone up to the corner of the top of the room and that will automatically engage your core it should do about 30 percent if you just make a little bit of effort because you want a strong column so that then your arms and your, leg, your legs have got a good base to sort of hold on to but, so it is worth thinking tall but if you just stick your chin forward that might go a bit bad for your for your neck so in mind, going. actually, yeah, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather it was crown up than forehead up, in terms of the postural part of the dynamic. Um, the other thing, with just picking up on Julie's point, there is that with the with the sternum being pulled up and forwards, you will naturally increase the volume of air in your lung. Your chest expansion will just be a little bit bigger, um, and whilst you can get a, a few, you know, you're going to need air exchange the more volume that you can shift, the better your oxygenation in your blood and therefore the, the, the um, supplies to your muscle tissue. Mm. 
slightly perturbed because Kate put her head in her hands and then walked out of shot at that point. <laughs> Does that sound all right, Kate, to you? Muted again. <laughs> Sorry, I missed that bit. No, it was the comment about the, the breastbone coming up in the increased air airflow and um, increased lung. Makes sense, doesn't it? I think. Yeah. Um, if you if you then actively use the the uh, outside postural muscles, you'll find that that'll lift you into the air. Um, and on a jump, if you're using your um, these muscles here, lat dorsi, if you're using those to pull down you will actually pull yourself into the air just by counterbalancing the whole thing. But you've got to have your, your posture straight in order for that to really be effective. Um, and in some of the um, Koki practice sessions, we're, we've actually just been learning different ways of jumping um, just by using and trying to use different musculature um, in order to get the illusions of height as well as the extra bits of height. Um, you know, none of us are going to be in in um, in competition with the with the high jumpers, but we're, you know, we we can at least get a bit of air under our feet when we're jumping, uh, so that we look as if we're off the ground, and we've got this absolutely straight postural position, um, which allows you the anchor upon which to do that. Yeah. All good stuff for the video. All good stuff, yeah. Um, shall we do it again before we cool down too much? We ought to, you're quite right. <laughs> Whole dance. <laughs> I'll play the right tune this time. <laughs> feedback from uh, no everybody's muted on there they've probably already just done it they're beginning they weren't I think Lynn was saying 
open. Okay, everybody happy? More comments, more questions? Uh, Drew, can I ask about the hands on the beetle crushers, please? Because I think I might have got the feet, but the hands are going a bit wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, do nothing, do nothing, do something. Just kind of a, just enough to balance you, palms downwards. Down on the beetle. Get ready. And this is a shoulder thing rather than a hand thing. Picking up on Eddie's comments earlier. High up. Okay, so it's there, down, gather, up. But the gather is here, not here. Is that all right, Jules? Cool. Uh, other people were moving for the microphones. Nobody was moving for the microphones. We're all good. Okay, again, again. Oh, can I ask Andrew at the end, is it four plane? You've been doing four plane capers or is it the- Yeah, I got capers? that wrong last time. Okay, so it's two half capers, is it? No, it's four, four plane. Oh, it is four plane. Just okay. I, I was my error last time. No, oh, that's fine. Um, returning to the point about shoulder musculature, I was concentrating on trying to be aware of which muscles worked when on that last time I was dancing it through. And I find I'm pulling down with my shoulder blades as I'm coming down with my hankies in a double step. <clears throat> now, I suspect that's subconscious and it's just something that I do, but that's what I'm finding is happening. So if people are looking for some other strength type of thing going on or poise type of thing going on you might just want to just bring that to your attention as you're dancing <clears throat> so instead of just coming down with the hands like this you're actually coming 
down here. <clears throat> I suspect for a 6-8 tune it's probably more important because that gives you the uh, step timing difference that 6-8 tunes will deliver over 4-4 four, four tunes. And there's an inflection difference between the two time signatures. So did it turn out to be this one? It's four. It's a 4-4 four, four tune, this one. So it should be even steps rather than syncopated steps. But nevertheless, the points are still you know, worthwhile having in the, in the tutorial. Um, Ducklington naturally lends itself, and, and uh, again, Lionel Bacon's notes will attest to um, that Ducklington jigs can be danced for six. And there is a set form up for that in Ducklington, which doesn't exist in other traditions in, in terms of um, historical um, bias or whatever the word properly is. I can't think of it just at the moment. Um, and the way that that's done for the note keepers and note takers who want to write stuff down is that the uh, foot up is done by the first pair who then turn out on the final half caper of the foot up. They then walk to the bottom of the set whilst the second pair dance the same foot up. When it comes to the second pair casting out, they turn backwards and only go to the middle position. The bottom pair will then have moved up the set through to the top and they do their foot up and on their turn out, they turn out in place and are now the top pair. You then dance uh, a half hay when you dance it with two side steps and two single steps and a half caper. And you then repeat the chorus exactly the same and half hay back to place. Then in turn, the top pair who are now at the top do the triangle section, turn out and go to the bottom the middles the same to the middle um, and then the um, the bottom pair the new bottom pair will return back to the uh, to stay up the top half hay again um, and then the same thing happens for the Beatles uh, and the set ends inverted in terms of your positioning um, relative to uh, to where you started the dance um, and in that in that form um, six jiggers who when you you know if you're jigging for more than turn and turn about you can probably get away with two people dancing at the same time um you really can't get away with jigging with more than two people dancing at the same time because it then doesn't become a jig anymore um and it becomes very very straight timed because the dancer and the musician can't kind of get their thing together um that does offer a group of six people a very different dance. Exactly what I've just suggested with that one slight addition with the, the forming of the, the set of six and how you place yourselves um, will give a set of six dancers that dance, that jig to do together as a team dance. Uh, other dances in the tradition are Princess Royal, and uh, there is another one, but I can't think of it for a minute. Highland Mary, perhaps. I can't think of which one it is. And we haven't got Ducklington written up. Anyway, there it is. Those are the dances. Definitely a Princess Royal. Uh, Jane might be able to think of another one. She's not saying anything. <laughs> Jockey? No, no idea. Um, do we have comments and questions? If not, we'll do one more and then we'll go. Kate, you look as if you're about to say something. Yeah, I um, remember at the top of my head, a lot of stag dances, stag men dances, which is where I get my Duckington tradition from, are right. actually written by the side, so they're not traditional in the same sense. No, no, yours aren't, are they? They're just slightly, slightly different. Um, it's a jockey to the fair is the other, the other genre. That's right, yeah. Sorry. So we've got Jockey, Princess Royal and Nutting Girl for Ducklington. Um, notation is available. Uh, in your email, all the links that Pauline sent you should all be there. They should be there to videos on our YouTube. They should be there for paper stuff. Uh, the tunes are there. And I don't think we've got an MP3 for this one yet. Yes. 
but there will be one for Princess Royal somewhere. Um, but get in touch. I'm either direct through King Ina or, or via Morris Fed and they will pass on um, stuff to us. Um, Kate, you needed to say something or are you done? Well, I was just going to say that I was just very excited the last time we did it. I actually got some hankies and arms and they're probably not called cool hankies, are they? We got yeah, they are. Yeah. Oh, all right. <laughs> I got the arms going a bit, so thank you. No, that's great. We'll do it again. You can go another Ruth, go can I, ask, can I ask one more thing about the, the beetle Jules. culture? Is it left foot start on the beetle yes. where you step and then you then you then tap you the tap right. the right one? Yeah, okay. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, again, again, last time through, because unless anybody has got anything else they want to put through, we have come to the uh, slightly shortened end of this, this section. Um, hopefully that's okay, but we'll do it again. Um, <clears throat> can I just say a bit about the interpretation of the hands? Yeah. Um, you talked very early on about... Uh, interpretation of the hand movements yeah and uh, uh, I believe that there is another uh, valid interpretation which is the the one that uh, that we do in Bristol Morris men um, and that's uh, with the, the hands in the double step are done very low down um, uh, I can, uh, if you'd like, to, if you'd like to switch to a uh, gallery view so you can see me, um, I can uh, demonstrate. Yeah, please do, Mike. Right. If that's all right with you, Andrew. Yeah, fine by me, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I've left it till the end so that uh, you know it didn't cause confusion um, uh, throughout the uh, the whole workshop. Uh, but this is, but this is particularly for the people who aren't already familiar with Ducklington. Right. Tony, could you play um, an introduction and then uh, one through the A music, please? Yeah, that, uh, that very low movement, uh, we like it in, in Bristol because it gives a total contrast with all the other traditions that we do. Because all other traditions that we do are much uh, are very expansive and uh, Ducklington is therefore very different. And uh, that's uh, probably the main reason why we, we choose that interpretation. I don't want to cause confusion, but that was just for um <clears throat> an alternative for those who aren't familiar with Ducklington. Uh, it's certainly what you showed us there, Mike, was um hands certainly not coming above shoulder height, which is which is the point I made on the hands right at the very beginning. Yeah. See, the, the, the hands are not above the shoulder in terms of their, their rise. Um yours was slightly lower than that again, which is a, a minor difference and, and certainly well within the point that you're making. Thank you. Could you just confirm how you hold the hanky as well, please? Oh, that's a good one. Um, there's two, two ways of doing this that seems to work quite well. Um, I always put them between index and, and middle finger and then wrap the tail over the middle finger and then take the handkerchief between ring and middle finger and then round once more so that it comes through index and middle at the back. Right, that has the advantage that your fingers now will lie underneath the handkerchief so that you can push your fingertips, keeping your, your hand literally tight together, you can push your fingertips under the handkerchief and have them flick so that you get the flick and float. Okay, and that's my preferred. 
Um, what you'll also see is the same position, but people will take hold of the handkerchief like that over their hand. Now the advantage of that, you have to hold it in your fingers like, like that. The advantage of that is that it keeps the hanky much wider and but the disadvantage is you've now got to use your wrist to do the flick and you can't get quite a good a flick but you get a bigger handkerchief area to float with And it really, there's there's no ultra correct way of doing it. That's just the the, the two ways that uh, I I've seen different people do them. Um, the experienced Cotswolders here have probably got 101 other ways of doing it. So, <laughs> uh, some people have loops sewn to their handkerchiefs, and um, because I'm renowned for uh, oh yeah, and a knot in the in the end just to. Pauline, put your put your handkerchief in your hand so that you show where the knot goes. Lovely, thank you. Yeah, some people have loops in the end they put over their fingers, and on one occasion, um, a certain participant in this workshop threatened to um, put elastic on my handkerchiefs and put them round up my sleeves like we used to have gloves back in the day um, because I kept dropping them. She's not going to fess up who it is. <laughs> staplers have been suggested. Uh, yes, staplers have been suggested for me to stop me dropping my handkerchiefs as well. Yeah. So um, that that's 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 where we are with with the handkerchiefs. Okay. Right. Let's dance it through once more, and then <laughs> um, we'll have um, completed the the session. I think. And warm down.
Now, this morning, of course, we've ended up dancing in living rooms and at the bottom of people's stairs and in Pauline's case, in her wardrobe. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in performance terms, here in these spaces, we've kind of closed ourselves in and we've kind of not given the full range of movements. Um, what I'd like to make the point of is that when you do this, make it big. And when you think you've made it big enough, make it a bit bigger because you need to overexpress in order to make it look right from an audience's point of view. So you're going to need to do more presentation, bigger, more demonstrative in order for it to look right to, to the audience. Otherwise, it just looks a little bit diminutive or a bit stilted or, um, you know, just, just pull, pulled down far too much. Okay, warming down. Lynn has started. It is a muscle stretching to resupply format. This is when you stretch the muscles out lengthways within your capabilities. This is when you return all of your systems back to the way that they should be doing resting levels. So, Keep a look at Lynn's camera. So make sure that you just hold the stretch. Let the tension dissipate off and then change. My personal preference is to stretch a bit and move a bit. and then to stretch a bit more and move a bit more. One recommendation I will make is that stretching backwards, leaning backwards and head up is not a good place to go. <coughs> there are a lot of compressible structures in the posterior areas which are detrimental to you to to squeeze together um, plus the fact that you're you're really not stretching anything by going in that direction two of the muscles that will get forgotten are going to be these two going down to your groin the psoas muscle and just really engaging the core hard and then leaning forward to take your hip backwards, you'll feel the stretch come up into the groin. Adding the knee up the back to take the quads is also an option on that one, but the knee up and uh, the foot up the back to kick your backside um, will not do, um, without core engagement, will not do psoas stretch. You can add quads to a psoas stretch, but not, you can't use a quad stretch to do it. And remember to go sideways to stretch up the inside of the legs and then crossing over sideways to get the outsides of the legs. Please don't forget your hands and the eye surrender exercise for the front of your chest. And again, the principle of stretch a bit, move a bit. It's all about blood flow. It's all about blood drainage. It's all about water drainage. And this is what replenishes the supplies in the muscle tissues to stop them cramping, stop the blood pooling. That stops cramping. Waste products get moved out. <clears throat> Brilliant, thank you Andrew. Could we all um, unmute and give Andrew 
Lynn and Tony a round of applause. Yay.